course, with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, presents by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Did you ever talk to your grandmother or your mother about what it used to be like to bake an angel food cake? Before there was a Betty Crocker angel food cake mix, that is. Well, they used to have to take 13 eggs and separate the whites from the yolks. Can you imagine all that bother? Over a dozen eggs. Angel food cakes took hours then. And I guess that's why they only baked them for very, very special occasions. But now, you can have big, delicious angel food cakes all the time. Mmm. -hmm. It's so easy when Mom uses Betty Crocker angel food cake mix. That's the mix with the whites of 13 farm fresh eggs right in the package. Mom just adds water and your favorite flavoring for a perfect cake. Angel perfect every time. Cake after cake after cake. A high light every day is party day kind of cake. And it's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. I hope Mom bakes lots of Betty Crocker angel food cakes at your house. They're so melt in your mouth good. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Jed Rector, a gruff, stubborn type of man, stood near the corral with his ten year old son, Jerry. They waited as the ranch foreman galloped toward them. Uh, here come his takes. The way he's riding, that see he's got something on his mind. Golly, he's sure riding plenty fast, he? Ho, 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 ho down. Oh, easy now. Boss, we found that fence near the water hole torn down again. I uh, got the boys' men in it now. Well, by Jiminy Ticks, I'm going to ride back with you and see if that fence is put up right. All right, boss. But, Dad, you said you were going to rope a horse in the corral for me to ride. Some other time, Jerry. <laughs> Rope and set one yourself, son, if you're so set on riding. <laughs> yeah, when Jerry's able to do that, he'll really be grown up. Oh, I can't. Oh, come on, Jerry. Can't be bothered, man. Get him. Get him. As Jed Rector and the foreman Tex rode across the range, Tex was saying, The Drews gave up and sold out, boss. New owner arrived yesterday. A fellow by the name of Selfie. Looks like a tenderfoot to me. I saw him in town. Yeah, and if he wants to stay in the West, he better not tie him with the others around here. I hear he already has. Had a meeting at his place last night and gave him quite a talk, they say. Is that so? Uh -huh. No loud mouth tenderfoot is going to get away with that. What are you going to do, boss? Plenty. I'll pick up some of the men at the water hole and go over to his place. Tell him what to expect if he doesn't mind his own business from now on. And believe me, he can expect plenty. Get up there. Come on, get up. A short time later, Jed Rector and some of his cowpokes ring to a stop in front of the small ranch house, which Dr. Salford had bought. Oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Salford opened the front door and stepped out to meet them. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm Richard Salford, new owner of this ranch. Is there something you want to see me about? Oh, you're Salford, eh? Well, I'm Jed Rector, owner of the Circle R spread. Well, it's mighty nice of you to make a neighborly call, Mr. Rector. This isn't any neighborly call, Salford. I came here with some of my cowpokes to warn you. All right. Well, warn me about what? If you butt in and concern yourself about that fence I had put up... 
You can expect plenty of real trouble. But I am concerned, Mr. Rex. What livestock I have here depend on that water hole. Both Carter and Darby are affected the same way. If we all do what we can to help one another, we'll all prosper. There's nothing you could ever do for me, Shafford. The Circle R is prosperous enough without depending on neighbors. Are you stay away from my land, or by thunder, I'll have you run out of the territory. That's you, boys. Yes, sir. Late that afternoon, Toto, who with the Lone Ranger had arrived in the vicinity of Stockton, went into the general store. He was about to leave after making his purchase when Dr. Salford came in. Well, I reckon you have everything now, Indian. Mm, that's right. Excuse me, but I'm in a hurry. Is my order ready yet? Sure is, Mr. Salford. It's right there on the end of the counter. Thanks. Uh, you, doctor, will ride on stage at turnover near Milton? Uh, sorry, Indian. I, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. I'll be in again soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Salford. Mm, that's strange. Me sure him doctor me see when stage have accident down near Milton. Well, you must be mistaken, like he said. That's Mr. Salford, a rancher. He bought the Drew Ranch and just moved in there yesterday. He's a mighty nice fella, too. Tell me go now and take packages. Uh, come in again. Uh, me come back for more supplies soon. Adios. Goodbye, Indian. Get him up, scout. When Toto reached camp, he told the Lone Ranger about seeing Salford. The Lone Ranger listened intently, then said, It is strange at that, Toto, that he denies being that doctor you saw. Ah. He could have arrived here by train yesterday. But I wonder why he doesn't want to admit he's a doctor. And that's what me wonder. Uh, Kimasabi, uh, me get news about the ranchers, too. Oh, what did you find out? Me hear that Jed Rector, owner of Circle R's friend, call on Salford. Give him warning. Warning? Ah. Him tell Salford not to bother fence near Waterhole. Rector say him run Salford from territory if Salford go on land. Hmm. That dispute is likely to flare into gunplay any time now. Mm, that's right. I think we'll ride over near that water hole and see what the situation is. Let's go, Tano. <laughs> Later, Tex the foreman rode hurriedly to the ranch house of the Circle R. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, boy. Hey, boss. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what happened, mister? There's a masked man and a redskin snooping around over the water hole, boss. Uh, I figure maybe Salford and the others hired a couple of owl hoots to do their dirty work this time. Yeah, yeah masked man and an Indian, eh? Probably a couple of hired gun slicks. We'll get the boys and go after them right now. Please, Jed, be careful. I do wish you'd pull down that fence and let the others use that water like they used to. Yeah. Disputing about it is mighty foolish, seems to me. Well, just tend to your little Mary, and leave the ranch for me to handle. But, Jed, why did you suddenly fence them out? That's what nobody can understand. You haven't even given me a reason why you did it. I don't have to give a reason. I'm not letting their cattle at that water anymore. Dark and I've waited all day. Yeah, Jerry, you're always bothering me when I'm in a hurry. <laughs> I told you to go ahead and rope a horse for yourself, didn't I, Tex? <laughs> yeah, that's right, boy. Jed, yeah, don't tease the boy. Well, catching gun slicks that are prowling around my land is more important than getting a horse for Jerry. It's too good, right? Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode slowly along the fence that protected the big water hole. At this point, the four ranches come together. The water hole is on Rector's land, and he has a right to fence it in. Ah. There was some way to make Rector understand that he... Look, Tonto. 
Horsemen coming over the hill. Uh, that must be wrecking these men. Let's get away from here fast. Come on, fill there. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. Oh. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get Go Power too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue... The Lone Ranger and Toto were just out of range, and they decided to leave rather than have a gun battle. They led the Circle R men far back into the hills. Then, covering their trail by various means, the Lone Ranger and Toto circled back and headed toward their camp. As they passed the Circle R ranch house, Toto observed, <laughs> Maybe Rick would be plenty late getting back to ranch house. Yes, but they're still searching back in the hills for us. <laughs> Otto, something's wrong in there. Come on, Let's go. A moment later, the two men reached the corral. They saw the boy Jerry, his foot tangled in the lariat, being dragged around the corral by a horse he had tried to rope. Hold it, hold it. 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 Hold Hold the horse, Toto. I'll pick up the boy. Uh -huh. mm. He's unconscious. I'll open the gate. <laughs> Jerry, my poor boy. Is he... He's unconscious. Oh, bring him into the house, please. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> I'll put him on the sofa. There. <laughs> He might have been killed if you had He's too young to try roping a horse. Yes, I know it. Boy, hurt bad. Chemotherapy. Yes, Toto. He should have medical attention. But but there isn't a doctor in Stockton. The nearest one is miles from here. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, wait a minute. I think I know where to get a doctor. Toto, do what you can for Jerry until I get back. Ah. Oh. Well, easy. A short time later, the Lone Ranger drew rain in front of Salford's ranch house. Oh, oh easy. Steady there. This is more of Rector's threat. No, I'm not a gunman, nor did Rector send me here. I haven't time to explain the mask. I came here on a matter of life or death, Doctor. Doctor, well, you're mistaken. I, I'm just a rancher. You rode the stage that was wrecked near Milton. You were heard to admit then that you're a doctor, and you set a man's broken arm. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen to me, Salford. A small boy, Rector's son, is badly injured. I feel sure that if he doesn't have attention, he'll die. I'm very sorry the boy is hurt, but I can't help him. I know you're a doctor. And the fact that you let that boy die is something I can't understand. I'm coming inside for a moment. Hold on. What right have you to enter my house? There, that's what I wanted to find. That doctor's still on the floor here in the desk. That kit means nothing. It means that for some reason, you don't want people to know you're a doctor. Wait, what are you doing? Looking for more proof that you're not a rancher. Yes, and here it is. Your medical certificate. Hmm. Richard Salford Pierce, M.D. All right. Now, 
Now you know I am Dr. Pierce. Then you come with me to save that boy? There seems nothing else to do. I'll go, but... Well, it may mean I'll lose my own life. Thanks, Doctor. I knew you weren't the type of man who let a boy die. But you don't have to worry. I know the story of Dr. Pierce who had a gun battle in Austin with an angered patient. When I shot and saw him fall, I lost my head. I left town at once and dropped my last name and my professional title. I can tell you that the man lived what? and you were exonerated, Doctor. Is that really true? Yes. Now take this kit and let's start for Rector's place. There's no time to lose. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and the doctor rode hurriedly along the trail toward Rector's ranch house. They rounded a bend and came almost face to face with Jed Rector and his cowboys, who were coming from a branch trail. Look, Rector and his men. Both of them, hold them, hold them. All right, reach both of you. We got you covered. Ah, uh, Jiminy Boss, this proves the mass Tombry is working for self, but let's run them out of the territory. I say we ought to gun them down. Rector, this man is a doctor. We're on the way to your ranch house. Your son has been injured. You were lying just to stall for time. We know Selfridge a rancher in a pool with a dead. I'm telling the truth. Every minute counts if you want your boy to live. Very simple. Look. We'll take you to the ranch house and find out about you. If you were lying like I think you are, I'll put a bullet in you, so help me. Men, keep those two covered. All right, get started. Get him. Get him. Get him. Lone Ranger, Jed, and the others soon arrived at the ranch house and pulled to a stop. Hitch, you come along with me. Huh? We'll hold guns on these two. Take me to side with this. All right, boss. All right, get going, both of you. All right, and... Jed! Jed, it's Jerry! What? He tried to rope a horse and he was dragged. He's still unconscious. Oh, great day. I'll examine you, boy. Uh, bad gash on the side of his head. Unconscious. Low pulse rate. Oh. In the medical profession, that's known to be such a thing as shock. The boy needs immediate attention and careful watching. If I can be of any help, Doctor, I... Uh, yes, you seem to be the cool and steady type. I believe you could assist me at that. Very well. We mustn't waste time. We'll carry the boy to the kitchen table. No one else is to come into the kitchen except the masked man and Indian. Let's get busy. Right. In the living room of the ranch house, Jed Tex and Jed's wife, Mary, waited tensely with their eyes glued to the closed door. Mary? I... I've gone about things the wrong way. I hadn't been so set on my argument with my neighbors, and if given more time to my boy, this wouldn't have happened. Tell me now, Jed. Why did you suddenly stop them from using the water? Well, I... I bought a few cattle from across the border. I discovered three of them were diseased. Well, I, I got rid of them right away, but I was afraid the disease might spread if the others used the water. Then why on earth didn't you tell them about it? Well, I was afraid if the news got out, I wouldn't be able to sell my cattle in the future. It's been over a month now, and none of my other cattle have been affected. So I'll take away the fence and let the others use the water now. I'm sure it's all right. I'm sure it is now, Jake. Well, if, if anything happens to our boy, I... I can't stand thinking about it. Jed. Jed, I, I want you to pray with me. I'm, I'm not much on prayers, Mary. But if wishing hard is praying, I'm sure I don't it now. I'll say the word, Jed. Please, God. If it be thy will. <laughs> kitchen, the doctor worked quickly and surely. Absorbed as he was in the delicate task before him, he still noticed the quiet, steady, and skillful manner in which the masked man helped. Finally, the last bandage was in place, and after a long time of careful watching, the doctor spoke. His pulse rate is back to normal now. Oh. He's opening his eyes. Mom. Dad. He'll be all right, doctor. 
He'll need very careful and constant attention for a few days, but I feel certain that he'll be all right. Good. Shall I bring in his parents now? Yes, they may come in for a few moments. Mom. I... I want... Mom. She'll be right here, Jerry. Willie. Isn't he going My to be... My boy. How is he? The doctor says he'll be all right before long. He's conscious and asking for both of you. Oh, thank you. We'd better go to him, Mary. Stay only a few minutes and don't let him talk much. I'm sure he'll be all right. But I'll have to watch him closely for a few days. All right, Doctor. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry, my son, it's your dad. Dad. Mom, Jerry. I, I roped a horse, but, but he... Yes, I know, son, I know. From now on, I'll do the roping for a while. <laughs> it's Alfred Ives. The name is Dr. Pierce, Mr. Rector. The doctor, I... I don't know how to thank you for this. Just... Just tell the others that the water hole will be open to them again in the morning. While the doctor and I were waiting and watching here with Jerry, we overheard your explanation to your wife, Jed, about why you closed off the water. You did? Yes. You did the right thing at the time, but you should have told the others why. I'm sure they'd have understood and appreciated it. Yes, I reckon I went about it the wrong way. Dr. Pierce, I suggest you take up being a doctor around here. I, I could find a good man to run your ranch for you. Thanks, Jen. That's what I'll do. We'll be glad to have you as a neighbor, Doctor. If the West is to grow, Mr. Rector... The ranchers must cooperate with their neighbors for the good of all. That's what I've always said, too. I've guessed who you are, my friend. I've heard of you and your Indian friend, Tano, in Austin. You've done me a good turn, too, by giving me the news that means I may practice medicine again. I'm glad. Well, now that Jerry's in good hands and the dispute's settled, Tato and I'll move on. Goodbye, Jerry. I know you'll soon be well again. Goodbye, mister. Goodbye and good luck, and I... I hope we'll see you again sometime. Adios. Adios. Come, Tonto. Uh -huh. Goodbye, mister. Oh, golly. Who is that masked man, Dad? I like him. Yes, so do I, son. But I, I don't know who he is. He's a man among men out here in the West. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> <laughs>